All right, it's 914. Rosie's coming to the rescue here. Most common, it's one of the most common diseases in dogs. It actually impacts one in five. Osteoarthritis causes pain. Uh, they, they can't move around, immo immobility. The knees are vulnerable, but you know what? So are the hips. We thought this would be a good time to bring in our pal, IndyVet's Dr. James Spicer, with what you need to know to keep your dog healthy and comfortable. This is something that crops up different ages for different dogs. Different exactly. breeds are more vulnerable, different ages. Um, so what are the things that we want to think about when it comes to looking for symptoms that may suggest arthritis? Well, you know, as far as arthritis of the hips, genetics plays a major role mm -hmm. in dogs, mm -hmm. as well as uh, previous injury. Bre the breed genetics. Breed genetics, okay. exactly. Okay. Previous injury, a dislocation or a fracture. Okay. And, you know, just the wear and tear of old age. Um, over the course of time causes the cartilage to like break down mm. and, um, and, so and obesity doesn't help any either. A lot of that is happening on the inside and you can tell obesity but let's put up uh, some information that uh, kind of lists out the symptoms that we should be looking for. Yeah these dogs they'll, they'll, they'll exhibit exercise intolerance they'll tire easily but the main thing is, is that they'll have trouble getting up mm -hmm. usually in the morning or after they've been laying down for quite some time uh, activities that they usually would do, jumping up on the bed or the couch, going up and down stairs, they'll have trouble with that. Um, and they will have a very stiff, stilted gait. Mm -hmm. And the symptoms can be much worse when it's um, damp and uh, cool outside, just like in people. Okay, so Rosie hasn't hopefully demonstrated any signs. We I don't know what we do without Rosie here, kind of our, uh, she is our <laughs> spokesmodel here. Um, let's talk about some of the treatment options then. I, I know surgery is sort of, I guess, the last, uh, the yeah. last option, but what are some of the non-surgical ways? Usually what we would do is we would use um, medications such as aspirin-like products, okay. uh, MSM, glucosamine, chondroitin, just like people would do. Are these the medications that we would get from you? or? Yes, or of course, the, the uh, formulations and also the dosages are different in, okay. in animals. Uh, rehab, mm -hmm. helping stretch the joints out and so forth can be very, very helpful. But when those have failed... She thinks you're going to treat her right yeah, now. Yeah, she I'm thinks she's... When, when those have failed, then we may turn to a surgical option of a total hip replacement. Okay, and do you usually, I mean, that's a tough probably conversation to have with some of your patients who, you know, are bringing in an older dog, uh, the stress that that would create. Tell us a little bit about what happens uh, in, in a surgical situation, a ball, a ball and socket replacement, right? Exactly, and certainly factors uh, such as age, uh, what the dog looking at an X-ray there of one. Yeah, right there is a is a hip that was put in uh, at Indy Vet, and you can see there's a stem that goes down into the femur there, and uh, we have a ball and socket that we have put in to replace the hip, and it's very interesting that although they may have bilateral arthritis, arthritis on both sides, um, just putting in a single hip will really change their quality of life. For instance, here we're showing. Um, a model here, here you, where you work on the model, I'll work on Rosie over here. Alright, we got a model here where we have like a normal hip here, mm -hmm. but over here it's really big and thick, shows osteoarthritis. And what we would do is simply cut and put this uh, piece here mm -hmm. into the femur, and then we would put this little piece, this socket here, it sits in, the, in, sits the in there, and then uh, we have a very nice a smoothly moving hip well, and um, what would you say is the normal uh, recovery uh, I mean can they can Rosie live a normal life I mean yeah. given, given that sort of surgery these dogs will be up walking on their uh, limb within a few days after okay. surgery that, and they'll I'm actually be fine. running yes. and back to near normal yes. within uh, four to uh, eight weeks Appreciate that, Dr. Spicer. Uh, if you'd like more information about IndyVet and uh, in the specialty hospital, just go to fox59.com. Always great to see you. Doc, thank you. Rosie, You're all welcome. right, let's talk about the forecast. Uh, Jim was saying, you know, this is a good point, Jim. Six uh, winter.